Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is the letter coming at you from the Wild Wild West. We got an unboxing today. Unboxing today. And it already got open once, but we had a blooper, so we're redoing it. But anyway, this one's coming from the cutlery shop. The cutlery shop. I think you guys are going to want to see what's in it. Here we go. I packaged it all back up the way that the cutlery shop sent it. And I love the way that they sent, that sent this. It's awesome. Yes, it's going to be the clip point. The one I was telling, I told you guys I got. And Cutlery Shop still has some of these. So if you want to get a clip point, go to the clip, Cutlery Shop. Isn't that classy? The way they did that? And it also had a bunch of um, candies too. A bunch of Tootsie Rolls. But I ate them already. <laughs> I'm terrible. I can't resist candy. I love candy. Like a little kid. <laughs> but anyway, Shark Lot. The Stay Sharp sticker from the cutlery shop. And here's their card, business card. Get the information from it. And there's one other site that I found that had um, these knives still too. And it's called Knife Joy. Knife Joy. Alright, here we go. And it's got the Velcro patch. I'm just leaving it on there. I don't need to take it off. I'll just leave it on there. And for a lot of people that don't know, because I've been seeing a lot of people talk about it doesn't have a left side pocket clip. Maybe people are opening this up and they're not looking in all the pouches. Because if you do that, you'll find the left side pocket clip. So it's a totally ambidextrous knife. And this goes back in here. Because I won't be using it. Demco microcloth, and here's the knife. I love the I love the packaging and the way that they're doing this. I'm gonna keep it all together. I have to find me a, something I can put my stickers on, so I'm starting to get a collection of stickers. Let's see this cutlery shop thing out here, huh? I'm gonna leave that card up there too. There it is there. This one fully fits the blade, I mean the, the handle. This one is different from this one and that when I received this one as like, you know, we, we saw, you know, as I explained to you guys in the last video, this one, um, the shark fin, this is called the, the shark's foot blade and it's got the shark lock, but this part right here that you need to, to, to use to, to, to release the lock is called the shark fin. That's the fin. And on this side, the, my shark fin on this one, right in here, the part that you use to pull back the lock, was sharp. <laughs> it was really sharp and it was like stabbing in my fingers. And I, I, I used it, I, I, uh, you know, I, I continued to use it for one whole day, one night, and, um, uh, it made my hand sore. 
both my thumb and my fingers. And so the next day, I made the next video, day two, and that's when I wet sanded it down. So now it's comfortable. Now it doesn't bother me. But this one, it's comfortable right from the start. It doesn't have that issue at all. So it lets me know that my first one that I received, when I received it, it might have had a little bit of flaw right here because they didn't the bird. Because it only took a second to, to knock it down. So I know it was just like a, a burr, a, a, you know, it needed to be deburred. And as soon as I did that, it was perfectly fine. This one operates perfectly fine straight from the, straight from the beginning. Absolutely love it. They both have flat ground blades, high flat ground, uh, high saber flat ground blades. The handles are exactly like, except for, you know, different colors. Beautiful knives. Let's check out the weight. See how much they weigh. See if they weigh any different. Three point six ounces for the clip point for the shark's foot. Three point six ounces, so they weigh the same. Let's check out the blade thickness. The clip blade, 3.15. Was it 3.16 there? The shark's foot blade in the same spot, 3.19. And you know what, the shark's foot does look a little bit thicker. I don't know what it is. Maybe, it, maybe it's an optical illusion, but because it looks thicker all the way to the tip. Whereas this is, you know, this is a, a clip point blade, where it's, you know, it's a little bit different. It gets thinner towards the tip. It's got a more acute point. This one has a really cute point too, but it, this one wouldn't be good for stabbing things. It'd be good for cutting things, like cutting chores. Boxes and paper, I don't know, whatever you need, you know, stuff like that. You know, regular everyday cutting chores, rope, cable, whatever. <laughs> this one would be good for a lot of stuff. This type of blade is good for it as a hunting knife. You know, it's, it's, it's good for everything. It's like a multi-purpose style blade, the Bowie type. I call it a Bowie, you know, a clip, whatever you want to call it. To me, you know, when I was a kid, we used to call blades like this Bowie blades. We didn't call them clips. <laughs> but that was, you know, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, so, you know, it was a different time. And that's what we used to call them. But I absolutely love the shark's foot. This one absolutely works awesome now. Now that's been tuned and mo looks slightly modified. It's perfect. I love the way it fits my hand. One thing that's a little bit different about these, well, let's take another measurement. Let's do, let's do one more thing. Let's take the measurements. Because this one has a little bit longer blade. We got three and three, we got three and a quarter inch blade as opposed to a three inch blade. And the handles are a little bit under four and a half inches. And the handles are exactly the same. Total length on this one is about seven and a half inches, a little bit more than seven and a half inches. And this one's a little bit under seven and a half inches. Beautiful knives. And this one, because of that, because it has a little bit shorter blade, the way it fits in the handle is a little bit differently. 
This one I think might have been the one that this handle was originally made for. And I don't know. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just going by what I'm seeing, what I'm observing. Because this one, this blade fits all the way to the end of the handle. Whereas this one doesn't. And I think the reason why is because if you look at the inside of these, you see the reason why this one can't go all the way to the end. Because the lanyard hole. It's molded on the inside. It's an enclosed lanyard. I mean, it's a lanyard hole that goes through the handle. But the bulge is right here in the handle. And so this blade, because of the, the shape of it, it can't go all the way to the end of the handle. Because it, it'll bump into the lanyard hole. But you know what? I've been using this knife, and I absolutely love it. I don't care. I don't care, because... It's hard to find a three-inch knife, a three-inch blade knife, which is legal everywhere in California, and uh, with a handle that fits your hand real comfortably like this one does. It's a little bit tight, but it's still comfortable. It's a very comfortable handle. You know, I could use this all day long. This is an easy-use handle. That's one thing I like about Dimco knives. He always, he always makes handles that are really comfortable. It's one of the things I used to always like about my, my cold steel triads. Is that they all have the ones I like all have really comfortable handles. <clears throat> Absolutely love it. Which one do I like better? Hmm. Let me zoom you guys in so you can see these a little bit better. Which one do I like better? This one was perfect straight out the box. There's no um flaws or you know the the, the shark slot wasn't um the, the jumping on it was just right it doesn't hurt my fingers at all and it's very comfortable to use and i do like the way that this blade goes all the way to the end and fits in this handle i think this one the fitment on this one looks nicer as compared to the shark's foot it's just a real beautiful knife and it's got a nice multi-purpose blade that's good for anything. That's the clip point, or the Bowie blade, whichever, whichever name you want to use for it. This one. It tore my fingers up the first day I had it. Because <laughs> the, sh the shark fin was sharp. <laughs> it was biting me like a shark. It was a real shark. And then the next day, we tackled it. We tamed that shark. Now the fin's not so, so sharp. I absolutely love this one. I love this one because I can carry this knife everywhere, and I absolutely love it. It's a knife that I really like that I can carry anywhere. That doesn't very often happen for me. The last time that happened was with the Cold Steel Mini Lawman. The one with the CTS 6 HP and the slim G10, G, G10 scales. That used to be my favorite little knife. And then I got the micro flip, but my micro flip, the only thing I don't like about the micro flip is that it doesn't have a, you know, I can't get the full grip. I like, and to me, having a really good grip is important. Because if I ever do have to use this as a self defense tool, I want to be able to hold on to it properly. And this one I can do that with. Now, as a self-defense tool, this one would be better because it's better for stabbing. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. Better for um, penetrating. Whereas this one, it'd be a slasher or slicer or whatever you want to call it. Not so much a penetrator. It could be pretty blunt. So this one to me is a tool. I think of this is more as like an everyday cutting tool. I think that's the whole purpose behind this model was to be a tool. Something that, you know, because that's how, that's how Andrew Demko is. He likes to make tools. But he likes to make strong tools that can be used for everything. And that's what this one is to me. And I love it. And I know the blade looks kind of goofy because it's short for the handle. But you know what? This handle is so comfortable in my hand for a small knife. That's so I'm okay with that. So I would have to say, 
I'm going to continue to carry the OJ. Orange juice. <laughs> That's why I nicknamed this one. This one's orange juice. My, uh, my purple cogent is purple rain. This one's orange juice. I'm naming these knives. <laughs> but anyway, I love them both, though. Now, you know, I'm, I'm going to carry this one, too, though. You know that. You know, I like both of these knives. Both of them are awesome. Both of them are awesome. So that's all I got for for you guys today. Did you guys get a really good look at these? Well, let me show you some different ways I've 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 figured out how to open these knives too. We'll do it. We'll do it. The, I don't know. Should we do it the old one or the new one? Let's try the new one out. One of the ways I like to close them now is that you take your finger and you just lay it on the back of the jimping. And then you can just close it. This one, I've, I've gotten used to doing it all the time. So let me do it on this one. Because this, this one, has the, the blade shape is a little bit different. There you go, like that. It's a real comfortable way to open and close it. The other ways that you know the, the, the ways that you guys have all seen, it's like you know, you can whip it back and forth. Awesome knife. Um, let me see what else can I show you guys. Reverse open. It's a beautiful little knife. I absolutely love this knife. It's definitely turned into one of my little favorites for my my you know work for the work knives I carry to work. And it's fun to fidget with. It's addictive because you can open it so many different ways. There's other ways I can show you guys too, but it's got, I don't really have enough room on this table to show you guys. But there's this awesome little knife. It's real fun. It's a real fun little luck. The first day that I got it, I had you know it was, it was hard for me to figure it out. But once you figure out how this lock works, it works really nice because you, you just pull back and you lift. And you have like total control with the lock. I mean, you can totally control this knife with the lock, which is, you can't do that with other locks. I don't know if it's because it's the way it's made because you have a long flat in the, in the blade tang. And the blade tang's fairly thick and, and, and durable looking too. It looks like this knife can handle some, handle some um, abuse. Andrew Demko, I saw Andrew Demko talk about this knife and he said it can hold, um, 750 inch pounds or 250 um, pounds. So we know it can hold at least 250 pounds. That's a strong knife. It, you know, like a knife like this that, that would probably be a triad might be a little bit stronger, I think. You know, with a full steel frame and with a triad lock, with the same thickness of blade, I think it would probably be a little bit stronger than this knife. But this knife is more fun to use, and it's still a very strong knife. It's a very fun knife to use. Because you, know, you can open it up and close it so many different ways. Let me play with this one a little bit for you guys, because this one's a new one, huh? I'm up here playing with the old one. Beautiful knife. Absolutely love it. And I've been playing with the other one nonstop, and it stays centered, doesn't come loose. So the, the D-shaped um, pivot pin is staying, you know, mounted into the frame. It's not it's not changing or anything, so it's not moving around. So, you know, it, the quality of it is very good, too. The only problem I ever have with these knives, though, is that I, th I just think for $150 that you could you sh they should have better materials. You know, they should they should have something other than Grivery and they should have something other than Austin A. Not not putting down Austin A. I love Austin A. But Austin A is a kind of is a, is a real good budget steel that is, you know, if you're gonna charge hundred and fifty dollars for something, you need to have a mid grade steel, not a budget steel. Budget steels to me are steels that they use on knives, you know, generally that costs under a hundred dollars. 
A good mid-grade steel you should be able to find on knives in between $100 and $200. And then for like the top, you know, the high-grade steels you should be able to find on knives from $200, $300. That's the way I sort of look at things. And for the price of these, they're right at $150. You should be getting like, I don't know, like a CPM. You should be able to get a, you know, one of the powdered steels, one of the American powdered steels, like um, a CPM 154 or S35EN or something. You know, one of those types of steels. You should be able to get that on this knife. And the, and the handle should be, you know, they should be able to be um, either, you know, Micarta or G10 or um, what's the other stuff? Uh, carbon fiber. You know, something like that. At least G10. You know, G10, you know, is the, usually the least expensive route to go. But not, not Grivery or FRN. That's just plastic. Come on. Come on, be real. That's just plastic. And these aren't handmade knives. These are production knives. And they're made at the same factory. I, that's my understanding as where the uh, cold steel knives are made. And cold steel, they would always give you knives with G10 and, you know, S35EN or, or CTS6HP for around $100. You know, like a Recon 1 or something which is a bigger and stronger knife than this. So, with a thicker blade too. So, you know, um, that's why that's why I'm sort of looking at this because, you know, it's made at the same place, you know, so it should be like the same prices, right? I don't know, you know, because like with materials like this, I know it's a shark's luck. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it, you know, extra 50 bucks for the shark's luck. But I think this would be, you know, with the materials, it should be like a $50 knife, but because it's a shark's luck, I would say it'd be a hundred dollar knife. And that's the way I sort of felt about like the CRKTs when they came out with the deadbolt, the Flavio Coma deadbolts. And they were charging over a hundred dollars for them. And I, I I just I just you know I just think that those should have been, you know, hundred in between, you know, like seventy five and a hundred. You know, because of the materials, because they had using four one one six corrupt. But at least they they would put like on the seismic they use G ten. But uh, on the on the what you call it the linchpin, they use FRN. But I don't know. But I hope I hope the reason for it is because they want to build up the company. If 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 that's what if that if that's what um, Andrew's doing, you know, he needs to you know build up the funds so he can build up the company, make it stronger, and then he can give us more products. That's cool too. That's cool too. Because I know Andrew and, and his family and his brother, you know, they're, they're just starting out and trying to, you know, be a real company. So, you know, so. And this is a really good start. For these, these are their first production knives. And these knives are awesome. I just wish they had better materials. But the knives, the way that they function, the way that they work, the way that they carry. The only other thing that I wish that they had, too, was a deep carry pocket clip. And I got a deep carry pocket clip coming for this one, the one that I carry. I'm going to put on this one. But I might get some titanium scales because Snaggletooth MF and, and uh, who else is, is uh, Fly Titanium. And also DLT, you can get them at DLT too. They're making, they're making a, they're going to make a handle scales for these. And DLT already has some, but I didn't really care for the ones that they have. I sort of want to see what the Fly Titanium ones look like and, and uh, the Snaggletooth ones look like. The Snaggletooth MF ones look like. And those are probably one of the ones I'll get. But I'll wait on that because I'm carrying this one right now. <laughs> and then when I get the titanium ones up, titanium handles, I'll probably carry this one. But right now, it's a shark foot. It's a shark foot. I love the shark foot. It's a mean little sucker. <laughs> I love the shark's foot. This one's a great one. All right, people. Well, that's it for today. I think I said everything I had to say. Absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. And you know what? Even though I paid what I paid for these, I think it's a little bit too high. There's no other knives like these. So that in itself sort of makes it worth it to me. And it's like the first production knives from Dimco Knives. That's cool too. So I say... Go out and get you one. Peace. Stiletto.